trigger for Jesus. Hallelujah. I know by your sense of commitment, your orderliness, that you are on your way to your high places. By your prompt response, all through this event, I know you are heading for strange heights. And may the manifold grace of God that have been coming our way since this event began have practical reflection in our lives. In the name of Jesus Christ. Most of the time in impartation services, people wait for the time of prayers. They wait for the time for anointing with oil. But the Spirit entered into me when he spake unto me, and he set me upon my feet. Repositioned me. Got me back on my feet. But that goes to only those who are thirsty, who are panting. Everything about empowerment demands a thirst. You are not thirsty, you are not entitled. Oh, everyone that thirsted, come you to the waters. And this making of the Holy Spirit, that's the regular, permanent demand for the outpouring of the Spirit. John chapter 7, verse 37 to 39. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Whosoever believes in me out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. And this speaking of the Holy Ghost, that's a normal thing. You're thirsting, then you're entitled. You are not thirsty, you haven't just <laughs> your phone. May your thirst for empowerment with the spirit of excellence be genuine today. Yeah. And may you return home with your own part. It is your panting that determines your part. It's your task that determines your takeaway. Therefore, I pray that as the word goes forth, your part will be delivered to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you for this great, great day. And thank you for all that you have done in blessing us since this convention began. All around the world, receive our thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now speak to us today. Amen. Let your word impart on everyone's life. And let everyone here tonight, this morning, be endued with the spirit of excellence. Yeah. Let the impact be the same around the world at this time. Yeah. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise and please, you may be comfortably seated. Amen. Receiving the empowerment of the spirit of excellence is what we'll be looking at in this prophetic service. Receiving 
the spirit of excellence. There is a spirit of excellence, and we saw it in Daniel, for an excellent spirit was in him. Then Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. The spirit that gets you preferred to others, that brings you out of the crowd. As mentioned, every manifestation of the Spirit answers to our desperation to receive. It says, honestly covet the best gifts. Honestly covet the best gifts. Honestly covet. And what can be better than uh, wisdom is a principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. We told you are getting, get understanding. Principal, major. You fail it, you don't graduate, you don't move forward. But it delivers in response to our coveting it honestly. You want it badly. You want that desperately then it becomes your portion. Honestly covet the best gifts, and I show you a more excellent way. Just be in love with God. He will not withhold anything from you. Love is a platform that gives you access to everything that heaven has to offer. That's the only sense of First Corinthians 13. Our love for God is a covenant qualifier to take a delivery of every blessing from heaven. Every blessing from heaven. Now, what is this spirit of excellence? It's the same thing that Paul defines as the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. The spirit of wisdom and revelation. So the excellent spirit is the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Wisdom and revelation. Can we find such a man as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is? In as much as God has shown you all this, there is none as wise and discreet as thou art. The Spirit of God. The excellent Spirit. The Spirit of wisdom and depth was in Joseph. Genesis chapter 41 and verse 37. Um, 38. And can we find such a one as this is? A man in whom the Spirit of God is? And Pharaoh said, For as much as God has showed you this, thee, all these, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. By the operation of that spirit. Now, you live in this place with that spirit coming alive in you. Yeah. And changing your story forever. Yeah. In defining the depth and wisdom and understanding in the life of Daniel... We saw in Daniel chapter 5, verse 11, uh, there's a man in thy kingdom in whom is the spirit of the Holy Ghost. That's how they know how to put it. In the days of their father, 
light and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods was found in him. And the Bible defines that as an excellent spirit. That's what he said in Daniel chapter 6 verse 3. <laughs> Manifesting through the spirit of God in Daniel. Coming down with light and understanding and wisdom, like the wisdom of the gods. And it defines that as an excellent spirit. So it's simply the spirit of wisdom and revelation. It's a spirit that enlightens and illuminates believers to remain relevant in the adventure in life. Turns them to high flyers. Make them eternal excellencies. A little one among them becoming a thousand. A small one, a strong nation. Isaiah chapter 60. Arise, shine, your light is come. And who are these are fly as the clouds. Verse 8. I will make thee an eternal excellency, no matter where you are now. <laughs> by access to that light. The joy of many generations. A little one among you, by reason of that light, will become a thousand. A small one, a strong nation. Yeah. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. So that's what that spirit is all about. It provides access to light from heaven on all matters of life. It's not religious, it provides real life solutions. The spirit of excellence provides real life solutions. The solution that uh, Joseph brought about was not a religious solution, it was a real life solution. Again, my prayer is that everyone will return with his portion of this excellent spirit today. Yeah. That's the way it works. He that asketh receive it. He that seeketh find it. And to him that knock it, the door shall be opened. You are in for the best of time. Let me quickly say here, and this will help you. The church world is in the age of discoveries. We are in the age of discoveries in the church world. The age of wisdom. The age of excellence. How do I mean? It shall come to pass in the last days that the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established upon the top of the mountains, shall be exalted above the hills, Micah 4, 1 and 2. And all nations shall flow into it. People shall flow into it. One nation shall say to another, come ye and let us go to the mountain of the house of the Lord that he may teach us his ways. And we walk in his for out of Zion shall proceed the law, authority, and the word of the law from Jerusalem. The church, the end time church, will be showing the nations the way to go. Amen. By virtue of depth and insight and light and wisdom, like the wisdom of heaven.
to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God. So we are now in the last days, the days of the manifestation of the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 3, verse 8 to 11. But much more importantly is the fact that you are, as a youth, in your age of discovery. How yes. little you young men because you are strong and the word of God abides in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. You are in your age of discovery. Let that ring a bell in your system. Therefore connect with what is happening right now because this is your best season. To make discoveries that will define your future. Amen. This is your best season to make discoveries that will define your glorious future. Amen. First John two fourteen, written unto you, young man, because you are strong. And the word of God abides in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. Those who know their God, they shall be strong, and they shall do what? Exploits. You are in your age of discovery as a youth, and from a child, 2 Timothy 3.15, Thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. So you are in the age of uncovering the hidden things of life. Take advantage of this so you don't live your life in regrets. You are in your age of discovery. I got saved at 15 and I consumed Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John like a ravenous wolf. I had this plague growing up, tuberculosis. Woke up one night, 1969, the same year I got saved, and I saw the beds were moved away from me because I was coughing helplessly in the night without waking up. I felt like a leper. Then I came out from the dormitory and stood on a little rock and I said, Jesus, if it's true that you did all that's written that you did in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, do it now, heal me of this. I got free by his power on my own. You are in your age of discovery. 1970, I was 16, and from Lamentation 3.27, I found out by myself, not in the preaching, that it is good for a young man that he bears his yoke in his youth. And I went and knelt and I said, Jesus, whatever yoke I will bear when I'm old, let me bear it now. Because you say it's good. I want whatever is good in your sight to be my portion. Amen. Amen. Now, 1970, at 16, I found out I've been redeemed as a priest and a king to reign on the earth. And so I just possess a royal mentality that I belong to royalty. So I mustn't be found doing what uh, royal people don't do. You are in your age of discoveries. Wake up. Wake up. 1973, I saw Isaiah 54, verse 17. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. <laughs> and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment shall condemn. This is the heritage of the sons of God. And they are righteous of me, said the Lord. 
So deal with those forces before they deal with you. Condemn them, I will confirm it. I found out at 19. You are in your age of discovery. Stop being a crying baby. Wake up and take responsibility. You are in your age of discovery. You are in your age of discovery. You are in your age of discovery. 1975, I found um, Lamentation 337. I didn't know what I was looking for in Lamentation. I found it. Who is it that says, and it comes to pass, when the Lord commanded it not? So, reach out for what he commands, connect with what he demands, and then you have committed him to confirm it. This is your age of discovery. You are in your age of discovery. Wake up. 1976 at 22, I heard the voice of the Holy Ghost for the first time in clearest form. Go forward. Make a left. Now, make a left again. And now, make a left. And let me directly to where I was going without any human aid. You'll find that display in John 16, 12 to 14. And then I encountered destiny the same year from Matthew 633, which is the running motto for this church. Seek ye for the kingdom of God and righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. And I enter into a vow to make it my way of life. I have not had the first regret on it. You are in your age of discovery. Wake up. You are in your age of discovery. Wake up. You are in your age of discovery. Wake up. 1974, I was 20, when I found out as the ostrich lays eggs and hatches them not, so it's a man that gets riches and not by right. He shall live in the midst of his days and at the end he shall be a fool. Stop looking for illegitimate money. It will finish you, sir. Don't need that. A friend visited me and I said to him, David, his name happened to be David. <laughs> Don't touch anything that's not yours or you'll be cutting down on your life's farm. I was 20. It prepares you for the years ahead. You are in your age of discovery. Read all the devils and find all findables. They will be assets for you in the future. Read all the devils. Don't just be going about and plugging your ears with nonsense and be hearing funny things. You settle down with substance. Sir. Settle down with substance. Then through the ministry of uh, Wigglesworth, I found out that by redemption, I'm now seated far above all principalities and powers. We're not talking about small, small witches and other principalities and powers. Far above, far above, far above. Far above. Far above. Now, all this time, I, I wasn't called to ministry. I was just a searcher of the mind of God on issues through readings, buying of books. Man. I'm a book addict. Far above, my God, it was beyond me. Now, from that year on, I was 25. No devil has been able to look at me in the face and go free. No. No. Because I have discovered my far above status by redemption. Not by skill, not by expertise, not by strength, by redemption. We were raised together with him. I met together with him in heavenly places and it's located far above of the and powers. You are in your age of discovery and from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that is in Christ Jesus. It's a brand new day for you. Yeah. And I, Daniel, understood by books. You are in your age of discoveries. 
you are in your age of discoveries, don't play around with this time. It's a time of great opportunities for you to realize your glorious destiny in Christ. My God. Let me stop here in 1977. I encountered Jeremiah 29, verse 11. And I was reading there in the Revised Standard Version. <laughs> he said, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. Plans of welfare are not for evil. Plans for welfare are not for evil. To give you a future and a hope. All your men will need this. Your future is not in your plan. Your future is in this plan. So go find this plan and line up with it. Your future is not in your plan. Man, you know, there were no internet or anything in those days, so I bought 400 postcards and wrote that scripture to all my friends and sent them out. Your future is in this plan, not in your plan. God just told me that this morning. If I never knew that, I would have missed God altogether. What I'm doing now is not in my plan. What I'm doing now is access to his plan. <laughs> Don't just carry your, your, your luggage and jump to Canada, jump to Europe, jump. You will just be jumping and jumping and jumping. Like a grasshopper. But look where. Don't, don't, look, there is no boat face here. Oh. We only triumph by truth. 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 You can't force God to say what he has not said. So stop playing smart. Smart in court. Someone said to me that God called him to ministry and said, I hope it's a vision and not a reaction. He says, a vision. So I said, well, God, whatever you tell him to do, back it up. There's no way I can pray for God to back up what he has not commanded. And it was quite an OP task. It's not a career, sir. Life, you either get it right or you're wrong. You can't be in between. You will get it right from now. Yeah. That's why the subject of vision is not something to toy with. It's your discovery of divine plan as it relates to you. So find out what kind of business to engage in, which kind of place to be, not where you see some doors open. Amen. Not open doors are God's doors. Many are traps in disguise. You won't miss your step. Amen. You will not miss your step. Amen. Say with me, I'm in my age of discoveries. This is where my future is determined. So help me, Jesus. Not to sell up my birthright as a playboy. Help me, Jesus, Help me. to get serious, get serious with my life yeah. and your plan for me. Yeah. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Yeah. The spirit of excellence is our access to out of this world realm of wisdom. I mean, Job 28 and verse 12 to 13 and 20 to 22. Job 28, we had a celebration of divine wisdom here. He said, but where shall wisdom be found and where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof, neither it is it found in the land of the living. What we are discussing is not found in the land of the living. It's out of this world 
order of insight. Now, let me ask you this. Is there any school of psychology where you can unravel the dream of another person? No. It's not found in the land of the living. Is there any laboratory where you can equip a man to go through the fiery furnace on scratch without a smell of fire on him? No. It's out of this world. Out of this world. Is there any injection you can give to a man that will go through the den of a lion and come out to be testifying? Out of this world order of wisdom. Now, a man was lost in the deep for one night by name Paul and came out in the morning, not to the hospital, went on his next assignment and he's not a diver. Out of this world order of wisdom, out of this world. Now, go to verse 20 of the same chapter. You'll find the same thing being said. Now, whence then comes this kind of wisdom and where is the place of this kind of understanding? Now, saying that it is hid from the eyes of all living. So it's of the natural realm. Completely of the natural realm and kept close to the fowls of the air to high brass researchers. It's not, they are not near where it is. Kept close from the eyes of all living. Now, that's the kind of release you are receiving now. Yeah. Somebody believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Now, this kind of wisdom is not available in the knowledge market. No. John, Job 28, verse 14 to 19, it begins to tell how that nothing can assess it. The depth said, it's not in me, great philosophers. The sea said, it's not with me, the wealthiest folks on the earth. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. <laughs> now, verse 17, praise God. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of gold. No mention shall be made of coral or pierce, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. It's not available in the knowledge market. You can't get it anywhere. <laughs> the topaz of Ethiopia, one of the strongest currencies of those days, shall not equal it, neither shall it be way value with pure gold. Now, whence then come this kind of wisdom and where is the place of it understanding? Certain things will start happening in your life that no scientific theory will be able to explain it. And yet, they will be pure, pure. Not games. Pure, pure. This kind of wisdom has capacity to tame destruction and death. Job 28 and verse 22. Destruction and death said, we have had the fame thereof with our ears. <laughs> capacity to tame destruction and death. Capacity to tame destruction and death. We are in the age where the world, a good old age, will become the new experience of believers. Amen. Where as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. Amen. And my own elect shall long enjoy the fruit of their work. Can I hear your amen? Yeah. Just knowing the right thing to do to keep strong and healthy. And then you are there. Praise God. This wisdom creates solutions to the challenges of life. 
in Job 28, 10 and 11. Nine to eleven, please. He put that forth his hand upon the rock, he overturns the mountains by the root as if they are not real. Practical solutions to life situations. Now, verse 10: He cuts out rivers among the rocks. That's not normal. And his eyes see it every precious thing. He discovers treasures in the midst of trash. Amen. Amen. He binds the flood from overflowing and the thing that is he, he brings forth to light. <laughs> so, where shall this wisdom be found and where is the place of this kind of understanding? Practical solutions. Create, it doesn't beg situations. He creates solutions to them. You are living here today with that solution creative power. Yeah. And you'll never be stranded again. Yeah. You'll never be stranded again. Yeah. You'll never be stranded again. Yeah. Conclusion, God is the only source of this realm of light and understanding. He said, God knows the way thereof. The question has been, where shall this be found? But 23 says, God knows the way thereof. God understandeth the way thereof. And he knew it, the place thereof. It's all with God. It's all with God. Who gives wisdom to the wise and understanding to men of knowledge? He knows the way. God only. So your being tied to God is your only guarantee access. My being tied to God is my only guaranteed access to that realm. You can't put God aside and flow in this realm. In Daniel chapter 2, Daniel was blessed in the name of the Lord in verse 22 to 23. Let's start from 21. Daniel 2, 21. And he changed the times and the seasons Start from 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. He changed the times and the seasons. He removed kings and set out of kings. He gave wisdom to the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. God, the source. He revealed the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in darkness, and the light dwells with him. And he said, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what is out of thee, for thou hast now made known unto me the king's dream. <laughs> that wisdom has only one source, God. I must tell you this, you never find it in any research institution anywhere in the world. Any research institute, not any high brass university, is not there. God knows. God knows. My God. We were in this sanctuary for years without an air conditioning system, and nobody was talking. Why? God shows what to do. So we have a kite in place, and the kite is going from wherever it's coming from. And we must be coming from somewhere at all times. So wherever you're coming from, the kite will catch it. It will come into the home and push the hot air up and give us the cool we need. Praise God. 
solution bearing insight. That's what we are living here with. Amen. You won't struggle again where others struggle. Yeah. However, a capital demand for assets. Well, no assumption, no birth. Is what makes a man come alive. And there is no wisdom nor cancer nor knowledge in the grave. So we are not talking about wisdom to those who are not alive yet. So whoever has the Son of God has life. So has not the Son of God has not life. So you must be born again before you are a candidate for endowment with the spirit of excellence. You must be born again. I mean, with fruits of repentance at work in your life. You must be born again with fruits of repentance in your life. He said, bring forth fruits worthy of repentance. There, there is fruit, proof that things have changed. The life changer has entered into your life and has brought about changes in your life. Any man being Christ is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Don't just get lost in the crowd. Are you born again? Where is the proof of your new birth? Where are the fruits of repentance in your life? You can fake it with men. You can't fake it with God. You can fake it with men, but you cannot fake it with God. The only authentic proof of redemption is the passing away of old things and the old things becoming new. If nothing has changed, nothing real has happened. However, to experience the outpouring of the spirit of wisdom and revelation, which we also call the spirit of excellence, the fear of God is a non-negotiable requirement. The fear of God. Now watch all those men that operated in that realm. If you look at that same scripture we're looking at, Job 28, verse 27 and 8, and 28, it defines our assets. And unto man he said, 28, Behold, the fear of the Lord is your assets to this realm, and to depart from evil is to flow in it. You can't assess this realm without the fear of God at work in you and in me. Reverence and godly fear as your new lifestyle. Daniel had that spirit in him, but he purposed in his heart not to defy himself. And he lived up to it by grace because Daniel 6 Four and five, they could not find anything amiss in his life. And until they find it against the law of his God, they can't catch him. He was just on with God. And then he carried the spirit of the Holy Ghost in him with light and understanding and wisdom and the wisdom of the gods, which we call the spirit of excellence. The fear of God, the fear of God, the fear of God. Joseph, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? <laughs> and they said, Pharaoh said to him, I've heard of you that you can interpret all matter. He said, no, it's not in me. God himself at work in me will give Pharaoh an answer. And then, ah, what a man with the spirit of God in him. Take over from here. The spirit of excellence will only, is only accessible to those who are living with the fear of God as a lifestyle. Joseph said, but I fear God. 
but I fear God. But I fear God. But I fear God. And we saw these two folks manifested the spirit of excellence supernaturally. We saw it. How do you preserve food in the days there were no chemicals? My God. And for seven years, and they will now eat it for another seven years. So you are talking about some food gathered that will live for seven years and no breakage. No damage, no losses. Spirit of excellence. Now, I release you from here by this impartation as solution bearers. Yeah. You step into a business, new things will start happening there. You never run out of valuable ideas anymore. <laughs> Remember, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. <laughs> Proverbs 9:10. And the knowledge of the holy is what causes understanding to flow. Psalm 111. And verse 10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endures forever. No fear of God, no access. In Proverbs 1, 23, turn ye at my reproof, and I will pour my spirit unto you, and I will make known my work. I will cause my wisdom to flow. Turn at my reproof. Turn. You don't turn. It's not your turn. Until you turn at his reproof, it's not your turn to enjoy the outpouring of the Spirit. In Luke chapter 5, verse 57, he said, verse 37, sorry. Luke 5, 37. He said, no man puts new wine into old bottles. As the new wine will burst the bottles and be spilled and the bottle shall perish. God does not tempt anybody with evil until he considers who said he will not pour out his spirit. So, <laughs> renew your bottles to prepare for the new anointing. Renew your bottles. Renew your bottles. Watch the testimonies from this impartation service will be most humbling. Yeah. When that spirit of excellence came upon Daniel, Shira, Meshach, and Abednego, they were said to be 10 times better than their colleagues in school. 10 times better, 10 times better, 10 times better. Excellence in school, excellence at work, excellence in business. 10 times better, 10 times better, 10 times better. Because thou lovest righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore, God thy God has also anointed with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. So how much you love righteousness and how much you hate wickedness will determine how much of that portion you can have. Wake up. <laughs> when you hear that um, Esau sold his battery for a muscle of men, say, poor Esau. Many are selling off their destiny with their eyes open. With their eyes open. They are just selling off their destiny for, for, a, for a muscle of meat. Just selling off. For someone to live here now and go back to his old life, he has sold off again. He has sold off again. I don't know if that can ever be recovered anymore. Somebody's told is changing. That prophecy in Psalm 45 <laughs> was about Christ. And you know how he operated in that realm all through. The fear of God. 
In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10, Paul was writing and he said, you are witnesses and God also, how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. Paul also said in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1 and 2, he said, Therefore, saying we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. <laughs> but have renounced the hidden things of this honesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by the manifestation of the truth, commended, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. And now, watch 2 Peter 3 15. And the Bible says, An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, as written unto you, according to the wisdom. I mean, a, and there are things there that are very hard, even for us who are apostles. Unusual depth, sir. Unusual depth. Riding on the platform of the fear of God. No one here will sell his birthright. right? Yeah. Paul wrote about half of the New Testament. And the word is God's wisdom in print. So it was a principal agent for communicating the wisdom of God from heaven to the earth. But the fear of God paved the way for it. You are going places. You are going places. You are going places. Therefore, receive this hour the outpouring of the spirit of excellence upon your life. Caution. This is a gift, not an achievement. And the glory must going to go to the giver. I thank thee, O Lord God of my fathers, who has now revealed to me the secret that we desired of thee. The moment you begin to give the glory to your son, the flow will cease. May no queen of Sheba visit you. Yeah. After that visit was the fall of Solomon. Half of this was not told me. As I step here, my spirit left me. It is a human being, an oracle. He was just showering accolades on Solomon. Solomon, after the woman left, Solomon started multiple marriages. The woman left in chapter 10, and Solomon began his strange marriages in chapter 11. May no queen of Sheba visit you. Amen. May no human applause blow your head. And the Lord gave Solomon wisdom and understanding as much as the sound of my decision. God gave Solomon. He didn't believe again. He saw himself as the wisdom. No. And then he went wild into utter foolishness. Near open market madness. Solomon married 700 wives. And other three, I mean, 300 concubines. 
making 1,000 women. They must all have plate number. Because there's no way to know them. Amen. And they must carry their number on their neck. So when you come, you say number 321. He said, when did I marry you? Oh, we were 80 the day you married me. <laughs> eh, where are you from? <laughs> he built shrines. I mean, his brain was upside down, sir. Solomon that built the temple that brought the glory of God down from heaven. He was building shrines in the same city. May no agent of the devil visit you. <laughs> May no human applause blow your head up. <laughs> Paul the Great said, I am what I am by the grace of God. He said, I'm not even what to be called an apostle. I'm among the chief of sinners. Grace simply found me. That's what keeps the flow. For God has seized the proud, but he gives more grace to the humble. Pride goes before destruction, and a haughty heart before a fall. Somebody's told is changing. Yeah. Pride is poisonous to the spirit of excellence. Pride is poisonous to the spirit of excellence. Nebuchadnezzar stood up one day and went on the top of the roof of his house and said, oh my God, this great Babylon, which I have built by the might of my power for the majesty of my kingdom. Daniel 4, 29 to 33. And while the word was yet in his mouth, he was turned to an animal. He was turned to an animal and they chased him out of town into the forest. The hairs of his body were like feathers of the eagles. He was disfigured. Pride brought him down. Virtually to hell. In Acts chapter 12, verse 21 to 23, we saw King Herod. He had put some people together to shout his majesty. After they did their address, he made an oration. And they shouted the voice of a God and of a man. And then an angel came down and struck him. And worms ate him up. Because he gave not God the glory. He was celebrating the majesty of his kingdom. And he was down. Pride is poisonous to the flow. Pride is poisonous to the manifestation of the spirit of excellence. Beware of it. Beware of it. Beware of it. There are many first class folks in school that are last class in life. The pride of first class brought them down. There are many last class in school that can be first class in life. Beware of pride. Young people, your parents ask you, where are you going? Ask me I'm going. I'm a graduate. <laughs> Who graduated you? <laughs> Is it not your mommy and daddy? Did you pay a dime all through school? When are you coming back? Don't ask me that again. Please, please. I'm not a baby. <laughs> you are not a baby. Go and find your house. <laughs> you are a man. Go and find your house. You see, pride will not let you fulfill destiny laid aside. It's one of the weights of life. And young people, most, most of them are captured by it. Caution. 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 But your case is different. Your case is different. Your case is different. 
please understand that your place in this end time move of God requires an endowment with the spirit of excellence. Don't toy with that. And this morning you are returning with your portion. Yeah. This morning you are returning with your portion. Yeah. This morning you are returning with your portion. Yeah. This morning you are returning with your portion. Yeah. This morning you are returning with your portion. Yeah. This morning you are returning with your portion. Yeah. Excellence will become your new identity. Yeah. Excellent behavior. Yeah. Excellent performance. Yeah. Excellent results. Yeah. Ex excellence shall be your new identity from henceforth. Yeah. You believe that? Let me hear your loudest amen. Yeah. Let me hear your loudest amen. It is done. Yeah. It is done. Yeah. Lift up your right hand wherever you are seated. And tap into your portion this morning. 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 In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Please get seated right now and give the Lord a big hand of praise. Before we proceed to the anointing session and prophetic blessings, I don't want anyone to be left behind. You are still here today and you are just not sure of your salvation. You are not experiencing the reality of new birth in your life. You want to say, Jesus, save my soul. Make me a new creature, forgive my sins. Write my name in your book of life and they grace me to bring forth fruit of repentance, fruit worthy of repentance in my life. Let all things pass away in my life and let all things become new. Jesus, I'm looking unto you for my rescue today from every destructive habit. Set me free. Wherever you are, I'd like to pray with you. Not only here at the Faith Tabernacle, but all around the world where we are gathered in this impartation service. Jesus, save me. Anyone in that situation that requires a rescue today, stand to your feet. God bless you. God bless you. Jesus, save my soul. Forgive my sins. I repent of my sins today. I desire a brand new beginning in my life. Stand to your feet, anyone. 
and everyone who have heard you in the time appointed in the day of salvation have so called you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Everyone standing for these prayers all around the world, please come around the altar. Go around the altar in your video centers. All to Jesus, I surrender, please. The lever I sing that song. All to him, I freely give. Today is the last time you come out for this kind of call because Jesus is saving you to the uttermost from now. As you arrive, please begin to ask God to forgive your sins. Stop feeling any form right now. Ask Jesus, forgive me all my sins. Save my soul today. Write my name in your book of life. Grab me a brand new beginning. I want to explain the reality of new birth. Stop filling those forms now and pray, pray, pray. Everybody pray. Pray from the depth of your heart. This is what I shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is what comes to me, I will know where it's cast out. He is willing to receive you, so why not? Cry out to him, everybody. You are out here in front, cry out to Jesus. Cry out to Jesus right now. Cry out to Jesus. Jesus, forgive me all my sins. I turn my back on them today as I accept you as my Lord and Savior. You are the only one who can save me. I've tried my best. It is not working. Now, save my soul, Jesus. Let the grace of salvation appear to me today. Let the grace of salvation appear to me today. Jesus, let the grace of salvation appear to me today. Jesus, let the grace of salvation appear to me today. Jesus, let the grace of salvation appear to me today. Jesus, let your grace of salvation appear to me today. In Jesus, precious name we are praying. Please bow your heads, lift up your right hand to heaven and pray this simple prayer of faith after me wherever you are around the world this time. Say after me, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins today and I know only you can save me from them. Save me today from my sins. Let today be my day of escape. I know you died for me. On the third day you rose again. And in rising, you raised me up together with you. Therefore today, Grant me a brand new beginning. Let the old things pass away. And let all things become new. As I accept you today as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you, Jesus, for delivering me from everything that is programmed to destroy me. Thank you, Jesus for setting me free from every deadly habit that has tormented my life for some time now. I thank you for saving my soul. I take cover under your blood today for my total escape, for my total rescue. Thank you, Jesus. Now I know I'm born again. All things are passed away and all things have become new. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Amen. Keep your hands up in the name of Jesus. 
you step out today by his conviction, your faith is declared confirmed in the kingdom. Yes. I cover each and every one of you with the blood of Jesus. Yes. You never step back into darkness anymore. Yes. Your days of struggles are finally over. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Now, just before you leave, New birth is your translation from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. So the torments of the past of darkness have no more hold on your life because you have escaped. While you are in the kingdom of darkness, you are free to be tormented and tortured and afflicted. But now, Colossians 1.13 said, he has translated you. You are not a child of light. Darkness can no longer torment you. Amen. Therefore, the grace never to step back to the kingdom of darkness is your portion today. Amen. Look up here. Struggles never end in the kingdom of darkness. There is always weeping and gnashing of teeth there. And now shall we escape if you neglect so great a salvation. So salvation has escaped from that kingdom of weeping and gnashing of teeth without end. Without end. You have finally escaped today. May you not suffer a rearrest anymore. You have finally escaped today. May your escape be for a lifetime. I escaped February 19, 1969. Most of you are in heaven then. <laughs> and I'm still enjoying my escape till now. Today marks the end of going and coming, going and coming. Yeah. The grace that brought you in today will keep you for life. Yeah. So shall it be. Quickly fill up that form that you have in one second. And those who have finished, please pass them on to those officials around with you and begin to get back to your seat. Fill up that card quickly.